Let's talk about the chronic wearing of the mask, okay? Now I can see wearing a mask in a condensed area, especially if someone's coughing on you and things like that. But um, a lot of times when I go out for long walks in, the, in an area that's wooded, I'm seeing people are just wearing the mask and they're by themselves. I see people driving their car by themselves and they're wearing a mask. So I wanna just talk about if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So here's some things I wanna talk about relating to the mask. A mask will restrict the airflow to your lungs, okay? And depending on what type of mask that you're wearing will determine how much air is getting through. The mask will stress the respiratory muscles, okay, around the lung, especially if you are wearing the mask for a long period of time. Now, the mask you probably saw uh, me wearing in the, uh, in the thumbnail looks like this. This is part of a hypoxic training program where I'm purposely restricting airflow to my lungs intermittently for maybe like two minutes while I'm exercising and breathing hard, and then I'll take it off back and forth. So I'm creating a stress. It's called a hermetic effect where you're adding stress and letting your body recover so you can then build up the muscles around the lung. So I know this is different because you're, you're doing exercise. And of course, people wearing the mask are not necessarily exercising, but sometimes they are as well. So the point I'm trying to make is that if someone is fragile and they're older and they're wearing a mask 24-7, uh, that may be a problem because you're adding more stress to an area of their body that is already weakened. And they're probably already susceptible and vulnerable to getting that virus the point is when you're in the car by yourself or you're outside, not around people, you need to take that mask off and actually just let air go in unless you're healthy and you're trying to get in shape. Uh, but definitely you want to go back and forth. You want to take it off and you want to put it back on. But the fact is if you put something over your mouth, obstructing the air, you're going to reduce oxygen into the lungs. Okay. So that's all I'm saying. There's different types of masks that give you different filtration. Okay. You have the N95 medical mask gives you 95% filtration with the pores being 0.3 microns. So it's pretty small. Now it's not hundred percent, but 95% is pretty good. A regular surgical mask will provide between 60 to 80% filtration. If you take a 600 thread count pillowcase and you have four layers, that will give you about 60% filtration. Then you have those uh, bandanas. 100% cotton bandana, four layers, will only give you about 19.5% particle filtration. So the best standard uh, number you're looking for is a 0.3 micron. Now the size of the virus is 0.1 micron. Now you're saying, well, wait a second. This virus can squeeze through this hole pretty easily because this is three times the size. It's true, but the more filtration you have, the less air you're gonna get through the less you're gonna be able to breathe. So there's a, there's a toss up between getting enough oxygen and filtering out a virus. So you can pretty much put a plastic bag over your head and get 100%, but of course you're not gonna be able to survive that long. So there's some other factors involved. One is this, the virus itself usually is traveling on a droplet, especially if someone is sneezing, coughing, breathing, or talking to you. So the size of the droplet, okay, is uh, much bigger than the virus because a droplet is composed of fluid, some protein, salts, other minerals, electrolytes, and even microbes. So you have a lot of things, kind of like a little fluid gel that's being projected in the air. So a lot of the viruses are entrapped in this larger amount of fluid they're going to be filtered out from the mask. There's always a chance that you're gonna get some of those viruses that are gonna get through, right? But here's the thing. You have also the variable of your susceptibility to the virus, how healthy your immune system is, and the viral load or the concentration of viruses. So if there's just a little bit of viral particles that are getting in your body and you have a strong immune system, you're gonna be able to handle that with no problem. So the sicker you are and the higher the viral load, the more you need to worry about your mask. But if you're healthy and you're just not being around people that are sneezing or coughing in your face, 
and you get exposed to some viruses and the virus load is low, your immune system will deal with it. You might have some very, very mild symptoms. So there's a relationship between the severity of the infection and this right here, the viral load. I think the worst case scenario is if you're a doctor or a nurse working in a hospital and you're around the concentration of viruses. Then you have the velocity of someone else maybe spreading uh, some viruses on you. So you have the sneeze, which could potentially project between seven and eight meters. That's 23 to 26 feet, okay, depending on how strong that sneeze is. Or someone's coughing on you. That's between five to six meters, 19 feet. It's a pretty strong cough. Or if they're breathing on you, we're only talking about two meters, about seven feet. Now, this is the distance that it could potentially travel. Of course, the greater the distance, the less the viral concentration. But then we have the droplet particles, okay? So if someone's sneezing, roughly it could be around 40,000 droplets, okay? Versus someone coughing on you, that's 3,000 droplets. Or someone that's talking to you for about 30 minutes, that could total about 3,000 droplets. So you can see the concentration down here, the viral load is gonna be a lot smaller than someone sneezing on you. So the reason I'm talking about this is just to show you the different variables of velocity, your own susceptibility, the viral load, the filtration, and the time that you wear the mask. If you are weak and you have a poor immune system, especially if you're a chronic smoker or you have COPD, chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary disease, or asthma, you shouldn't be wearing this mask all day long. Anyway, that's my thoughts. And now I want to hear your thoughts. Tell me what you think about this topic in the link down below. Hey, we're back with another amazing recipe. No grains, no sugar, totally keto. There's no suffering in keto. Absolutely not, Karen. And it's an immune system builder. Absolutely. You have to check this out. I think you should hurry up, watch the recipe, and make it yourself. It's just so easy to be keto. But is it simple? It's super simple. We hope you enjoy making it as much as we are enjoying eating it.